Welcome to uh, the Somatome Definition Flash Next Generation of Dual Source Technology Discussion. Um, my name is Rick Banner, Product Manager for the Dual Source uh, Somatome Definition Flash uh, with Siemens uh, Medical, and I'd like to introduce you to one of the most fantastic technologies of today, and I'd like to describe the technology itself and uh, begin with the overview of the dual source CT that was introduced back in 2005. And the benefit of that was the two x-ray sources and two rows of detectors uh, acquiring data simultaneously at the same time. Now what this allowed us to do is use the benefits of the two kilowatt generators at 80 kW each, combining them into one. It also allowed us to scan larger patients with the 78 centimeter bore, 660 pound table for large patients, being able to do those obese patients, keeping the isotropic resolution down to 0.33 uh, millimeters of isotropic resolution, and that again is isotropic, meaning all sides are down to 0.33 millimeters of isotropic resolution. Again, and lastly, 200 centimeter scan range. In addition, in 2007, the advance of adaptive technology brought us to the point where we could do adaptive 4D spiral, being able to do whole organ perfusion. And what the benefit of that is, is to be able to do true dynamic evaluations of uh, contrast uptake, whether you're looking at the venous or arterial, because you see the entire flow dynamics throughout, so dynamic scanning, if you will. In addition, we also brought uh, the continued advancement of dose savings technology uh, through uh, the, the advent of Dose Shield, being able to reduce the dose in every spiral scan. In some cases, up to 25%, depending on the type of scan that you're doing. Again, 25% dose savings in spiral scanning with Dose Shield, because on the front and the back end of every scan are uh, exact excessive doses to as you rotate through the 180 degrees of rotation to gain one image uh, with fan beam, you're able to el eliminate the first 179, if you will, because that is the portion of the scan that is not being used, but you still have to radiate the patient. We are able to exclude that with this adaptive dose shield technology. I find that very important. Again, lastly would be an invasive uh, suite uh, with 3D guidance for interventions is also available on any platform in the, in the definition class, being able to do interventions in CT is very uh, useful and is becoming more and more uh, needed and used in clinical practice. In most locations are growing into the advent of using this uh, CT guidance in uh, 3D interventions and getting true 3D color VRTs to map and manage your um, interventions is important because it saves you time. That brings us to the somatome definition flash. All of this technology is combined into one scanner, and the purpose of the scanner was to figure out a way that we can make CT scanning healthier for our patients. And we do that with the lowest dose and the fastest speed. The scanner, uh, again, um, having that flash speed at the lowest dose is done uh, through uh, many things, but one of the most important things that we focused on was radiation protection and patient protection. And when we do that with dose reductions, again, this was covered in the media with over 3,000 articles published in six-month period that, uh, that just passed. Again, it, it superseded anything else. So we understand that uh, customers have a certain focus as well as the community, uh, the medical community at large is looking for uh, dose reductions for CT. This is just not a radiology issue, but a uh, cardiology as well as emergency room, everywhere else, they're focused on dose reductions. Again, it's picked up in the main media. Eliminating breath holding would be helpful and advantageous. Uh, reducing motion artifacts is still an issue in some cases uh, with CT. Scan speeds for traumas in some cases would be important. A very large issue is pediatric patient sedation for CT and MR, so these are things that we want to focus on. And again, um, all of this is accomplished um, with all these challenges in mind. You know, we think about these things as we design and develop technology. Um, being able to get below the breath hold line, we've been reaching closer and closer as the time goes forward with the technological developments, but at this point, we're looking at ways to get below the breath hold line. 
Um, and we're able to do that, actually, uh, for the first time. We're able to get to split-second thorax uh, and being able to do that in such a, a rapid uh, way that we're able to do it without breath hold. Um, being able to scan the heart at less than a millisievert is our answer to that. Um, dose uh, neutral dual energy or single dose dual energy, being able to do that without extra radiation to the patient. Organ sensitive dose protection, being able to isolate sensitive organs and reduce the dose to them. So how we accomplish that and how is that done, we need to discuss that a little bit more in detail with uh, split second thorax and basing against conventional technology. And the technology at large basically can scan an entire chest in about five seconds. And most patients can hold their breath to a certain extent. Uh, but what about COPD patients and patients that don't have the luxury of being able to hold their breath at their own vents, for example? Um, we can make breath hold optional at 0 0.6 seconds with split second thorax, and again, I can't emphasize this enough, 0 0.6 seconds is extremely fast. It's almost, it, it's a little bit longer than, let's say, the blink of an eye. So to give you an example of what that looks like, here was an entire scan. You just got the entire scan in that one period of time in that 0 0.6 seconds. Now, at this time, we're looking at 20 millisieverts a dose, approximately, uh, and 20 seconds of time to do a total triple rollout from top to bottom uh, based on the fact that it's not one contiguous scan, it's a broken apart scan. With flash technology, we're able to do it at 0 six seconds at less than five millisieverts, and routinely it's around three millisieverts, and we're talking about an entire triple rollout exam, that's the entire chest from apex to base. Pediatric sedation is Optional at less than one second per all scans for pediatrics. There's nothing that's needed above that when you're using flash spiral. Whole body scans are greater than 10 seconds currently. With flash technology, we're able to do that in four seconds or less. A full six foot tall person at 4.4, 4.5 seconds. And again, dynamic scanning, that's phased resolved imaging. Uh, in the past was 16 centimeters and now with flash at 48 centimeters. Here's a clinical example. It's important to show uh, these clinical examples. Again, the first installation um, was about a month ago. Within four weeks, there's been over 160 scans done at this time and continuing to scan every day. Uh, here is a clinical example of 2.3 millisieverts for a pulmonary embolus identification that is showing up here in the bottom left image. And again, this was a triple rollout study and we're being able to get 2.3 millisieverts in the heart for free. Now, we talked about adaptive spiral technology, and again, it's phased resolve showing our uh, venous and arterial uh, phases as well as, you know, before the contrast arrives. So you get to see all this dynamically, um, and you can see the coverage areas here from 64 all the way to flash. Again, 48 centimeters of coverage, and the scanner moves so fast at 43 centimeters per second. That's extremely fast. So um, how do we do this um, phase resolve imaging at half the dose? Because that's basically what we want to talk about here. We're able to do 50% dose reductions for phase resolve imaging, perfusion type imaging, and that is very important to be able to reduce that dose. And we're using um, a combination of high and low spatial frequencies, pulling out the high spatial frequencies, uh, using the static anatomical info edges and noise, combining them into one, thereby reducing the dose overall by 50%. Um, and that was really helpful in reducing the dose. So being able to do a heart in a submillisievert is uh, fantastically important in the, in the economy, market, and environment that we're in with the uh, technology being very specific uh, to dose reduction, um, especially now being uh, so focused on dose. So with a submillisievert dose in flash spiral mode, it's the first spiral technology to bring us at submillisievert levels consistently and routinely. Um, and we're talking about uh, a comparison of 15, five to 15 millisieverts in conventional mode. And um, with all, all technology on the market today at 135 to 175 uh, temporal resolution, and we're talking about 75 milliseconds of temporal resolution. 75, that's really, really fast. 
and not only is it fast, it's at a quarter of a beat. I mean, we're talking about 250 milliseconds, 250 milliseconds of acquisition time, over 75 milliseconds of temporal resolution. Extremely fast, excellent image quality. We're talking about 0.90 millisieverts for this particular scan here. Again, 350 milliseconds of time for this coverage for a larger patient, and we're able to do it at 75 milliseconds of temporal resolution. Excellent, exquisite image quality for that. Here's another one, 0.9 millisieverts. Again, 75 milliseconds of temporal resolution, and again, we're talking about just extremely fast. 0.3 seconds. So here's a triple rule out exam. I just wanted to highlight the fact that you're able to see these stents. There's approximately there's four stents in here, um, and we're talking about again being able to see the PE structures, the heart, everything, all in one exam. And the BMI of this patient was 29.9. And by the way, this was 1.6 millisieverts. Extremely low dose. Extremely low. So now, um, with with the advent of all these uh, technologies put together in in this one uh, piece of technology with the definition flash, early detection, coronary CTA, triple rule out, and stress perfusion are a reality, and we're talking about being able to see, you know, sub millisievert scans routinely in early detection, coronary CTA for morphologic and function, in one exam, triple rule out with flash technology again talking about being able to scan the entire chest in 0 0.6 seconds and now stress perfusion is a reality with very low doses as well so dual energy being able to do that at a dose neutral environment being able to do that with uh, tissue characterization uh, using two tubes um, 80 kV versus 140 and now with the selective photon shield has brought the dose levels down to a neutral uh, saving dose to the patient by filtering out low energy that's coming off the high uh, 140 kV um, source. So now uh, we're talking about um, conventional dual energy with our dual source at significant spectra spectral overlap um, and dose efficiency and now bringing it to the part where we have uh, minimize spectral overlap, 80% better separation, bringing new technology uh, to the environment with new software developments, new developments in dual energy applications. So there's a lot of things coming with this improved uh, spectral separation that we're able to get. Um, and don't forget the dose savings to the patient. So now we have um, no longer uh, 510K pending applications. All of them have been approved, that have been filed up to this point. Um, that we've been waiting on. So we're talking about uh, lung nodules and xenon dual energy. So now we have a full uh, complement of uh, 12, 11 applications, including optimum contrast. And now we're able to get full 75 milliseconds of temporal resolution uh, with our uh, heart PBV plus, basically, getting perfused blood volume and coronary CTA at uh, 75 milliseconds of temporal resolution. So what we're saying is dual energy is always on, and if you need it, it's there. If you want optimum contrast, you have that ability to use it, and it's able to show you those um, AVMs and tumor um, venous and arterial flow dynamics. Next, I'd like to talk about um, our final segment, which is the organ-sensitive dose protection. It's important that we save dose to the patient, particularly in the safe, uh, sensitive organs, this is including um, breasts, lens of the eye, thyroids, gonads, any sensitive organ. We can isolate that organ, um, take a look at that particular scan range, and then and the scanner automatically identifies uh, through your uh, choices of where you locate the beam. Um, you can selectively reduce the dose to specific organs of the body. So we're talking about 40% dose reduction in the breasts, for example. We're talking about lens of the eye and thyroid being able to reduce the dose to the patient's organs specifically. And again, up to 40% for the, for the breast region. And again, there's already been a um, peer-reviewed article published on this particular topic, and it's called partial um, scan segments. And we're able to use a partial scan through the rotation and uh, turn off the dose to those specific organs. It's very powerful to be able to do that with X-Care. 
So to summarize, um, in every aspect of the scanner, in every area that we talk about, we'll be able to reduce dose to the patient, whether we're talking about selective photon shield for dull energy, or we're talking about um, flash spiral mode for acute care and chest pain management, whether we're talking about um, any segment of the body where we're using adaptive dose shield, we're saving dose to the patient. Care dose 4D, adaptive dose shield, selective photon shield, flash CT, noise reduction for perfusion studies, and X-care. The focus is on dose reduction to the patient. So um, again, to summarize, it's flash spiral scanning. It's 43 centimeters a second. It's no breath hold or breath hold optional. 48 centimeters of dynamic CTA with uh, dose reductions. We're spiral scanning for moderate heart rates, cardiac at less than a millisievert. Um, being able to do heart perfusion, any heart rate, um, dose-neutral dual energy, heart PPV at 75 milliseconds, and CTA, pre-processing all of the data so you don't have to, and uh, flash spiral scanning. So what I would like to show you now is the flash uh, installations that will be uh, happening over the next a uh, few months, um, RSNA was the first discussion about this technology um, installation over the past four to five weeks at Erlangen, and now um, Mayo Rochester in the next few weeks, and Johns Hopkins University, again, will be getting the scanner in the month of April, which is right now. Um, and lastly, we'll be able to do um, more discussions and have more uh, installations over the course of the summer, but uh, in September we'll be able to bring it uh, to an area near you. Once again, that's semitone definition flash, flash speed at the lowest dose.